I had an idea and just went for it. I was pulling in and I saw this thing on a trailer with those on the back. It was like, dude, that is so cool. I need to find that guy and ask him about it. So what the heck are we looking at here? This is a 2004 Impala SS, the way it should have been built. Yeah, pop, pop the hood and see what's going on under here. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> it don't fit too bad. Front to back's a little, a little tight. What was the story behind this? Well, I have a 2003 Impala that I drove to high school every day. I just thought, you know, hey, this would be a perfect sleeper. I was eventually going to do it to that one, but it got way too rusty. So I went and picked this one up just for swapping it. He's going to pull it up onto the pavement here so we can go under there and kind of take a look at what the rear suspension setup looks like because I'm, I'm honestly extremely curious. did the whole thing yourself what's the setup with the rear wheel drive in the back like how did you how did you do this well the rear is just a 10 bolt out of a 80 camaro just put an aftermarket four link see if we can see anything under here oh yeah so that's what we got going on under here hey you're not kidding that is really simple yeah wow is your fuel cell in the spare tire well no i was originally going that was my plan i calculated everything up and it was only going to hold like 10 gallons could it sit lower or is that how where it kind of has to be? Well, see, the pro one of the problems I had was shocks. I couldn't find a shock that had enough travel. Because most of my fountain only had like three inches of travel. That's not going to be good. <laughs> and I had to go long enough to where I had some travel. So I had to build other brackets just to drop it down without going through the floor and making a, a mount in the floor. So that's a four link with a pan hard in the yeah. front? Yep. I see that now. That's impressive that it's like that simple. Conventional wisdom would make you think that you would have to do all kinds of hogging out right. and all kinds of stuff and it's just not. Right, and the, the factory exhaust, training tunnel, exhaust tunnel, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's perfect. The drive shaft fits perfect. I only had to, I went to put the drive shaft in and there's a little section that hung down. Hammer solved that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's underneath the rear seat, you will never see it's it. BFH. Yep. So that, the drive shaft tunnel, drive shaft tunnel yeah, was the right. exhaust tunnel originally. Right. And you just put the drive shaft in there. Yep. It's almost like they knew. It was like, yeah. It's almost like they knew people would do this. I mean, you can't even tell from the inside. No. I mean, I see your bundle of holly wires up right. in there, but like, I know that because that's what mine are all shoved up in there too, so. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks all totally regular in here. You can put some stock wheels on the back and oh, screw with people. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Drive around. That'd be so funny. And I haven't even tuned the suspension or anything like that. It's just, that's where I set it and it's made nine second passes. It's actually mounted off the factory location of where the 3800 used to sit factory steering rack is in the back and I had to move it to the front I had to cut out the transmission tunnel so that's the only part of the whole car I had to cut out so to, to do the rear wheel drive stuff did you just drop out all of the was there a subframe back there or did you cut mounts off and just kind of gut it like how does that work independent you know rear suspension that was in it I just unbolted that dropped it out have you done anything like this before no so you just pick up a welder and started doing it yeah just I had an idea and just went for it. Let that be a lesson to you. You don't have to be qualified to do any of this stuff. You just have to start doing it. I had a bunch of people tell me, you know, you're stupid. Why, why would you do that until they seen the final product? And they're like, that's actually cool. I think that guy has hurt himself. What did he do? Did you hear that? Yeah. He was like, <laughs> and now he's like limping around. I wonder if he needs help. Is he bleeding or he just like hit his nuts or something? <laughs> what size turbo you got on here? It's a BS7875. You built, you built the whole turbo kit yourself too? Yeah, 
there's some stuff that needs redone. I was trying to make it to Drag Week this year. That all got, no plans went down the drain, but it'll get a version two. The evolution is the fun part. Is this what you ran today? Yeah, that's what I ran today. That's almost identical to like one of my early Escalade time slips. You get that 60 foot down, this thing will be nine seconds. Oh yeah. Is there... I only left on three pounds of boost. I didn't install it or leave it on the two step very long. Is there more room to be had in the turbo and everything, oh, yeah. power-wise? It's only on 17 pounds. Oh yeah, you're you're just getting started. Yeah, and that's with very very little timing. Fire it up! I just want to like, <laughs> just like show the people what this thing looks like moving around because it's so cool looking. sandwiched kind of yeah. so it's got a, it's got the cv assembly in there with the stud and everything it's just no yeah, joint no, on the other side yeah. yeah it's just cut off do you have a plan when you started or did you just start tearing it apart and wing it putting it back together yeah i knew i was going to ls swap it i knew it was probably going to go with turbo 400 rear i didn't have a clue <laughs> i just winged it there it's my my other car i actually before i bought this one i opened the hood took a tape measure measured it I'm like okay it'll fit and I started looking for looking for other cars. Did you like research people who have rear wheel converted Monte Carlos and stuff to kind of see how they did it first? No, I tried searching, I couldn't find anything. I got I laid underneath the car and I'm like, well, it kind of looks like a second gen Camaro with frame rails, so I'll just do it that way. There's subframe connectors on each side. Just a piece of C channel runs front to back, eighth inch. I welded it solid to the whole car. Keep trying to keep from twisting. Yeah, two steps on the brake pedal itself. <laughs> you just drill a hole in it and put a button in the brake pedal. Yep. Uh, the way you ain't got to have three hands, you know, you can put your you just foot brake and you got, you know, your gas, your brake, and you ain't got to let go of the brake and the it's two step button at the same time and just let your foot off the brake. Huh. Makes it so much easier. I used to have mine wired up to the tail light signal, but it was not. That's probably a quicker way to do it, right. like that, reaction wise. I was worried about uh, the reaction of the two step off the brake pedal without having like a like a spring or something like that on it to yeah. make it snap. That's still so goofy hearing that come out of this <laughs> right. thing when I'm like, man, it just looks so right. Where uh, where can people find you at? Uh, Push to the limits racing on Facebook. Um, I post a few things here and there about it. Um, I will be posting more here soon. Push the limits on Instagram. I haven't started YouTube yet. Maybe you should. Uh, Doing this kind of stuff at home in your garage is right. kind of what people people want to see that. Yep, uh, that's him right there. See, my girlfriend posts on the Instagram. I don't even know how to get on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, dude, this thing was freaking cool to check out. Hopefully people can uh, yeah. get some inspiration and just dive right. into stuff. That's what it's all about. Well guys, I hope you found that interesting because I certainly thought that that Impala was super cool. Like, as soon as we pulled in and I saw that thing, I said, I need to find that guy and talk to him. And really, I learned a lot of stuff too. And I hope you learned a lot of stuff, not only just about the technical aspect of what he did, but just the fact that he decided to do it at all. And did it in his garage, not knowing what he was doing. He just dug in and just started figuring it out. That's a, an important lesson to be learned with a lot of this stuff for some of you younger guys that want to work on things and have ideas and want to do stuff is that it doesn't matter what people tell you, this is dumb, that's dumb, you can't do this, you don't know how to do that, it doesn't matter. You just got to start doing it and if you really want to figure it out, you can and you will because that's just how it works. A lot of people start project cars and they never finish them because they feel like they're not qualified to do it or there's no, I don't know, they just can't, they get that fire for a couple minutes, a couple days, and then they're just not, it's not there. They don't have determination to finish it. Well, this guy did. He did it. I did it with the Escalade. Numerous other people have done it with a lot of other crazy looking things. 
and a lot of other stuff that's not even car related. It's all the same principle, all the same principles about, you know, doing a project car, working on a car applies to many other facets of just life in general and building anything. So, yeah, we get all philosophical on that, but make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know if you want to see more videos like this one about cars like this and I personally enjoy that because I like pulling out the lessons on it and kind of digesting it and putting it in a way that you might actually say, oh, okay, this is something that I can apply to my own situation. So that's what it's all about. We'll see you tomorrow.